Hi, my name is Ricky Wynn, and I'm a senior applications engineer at Hawkridge Systems. And today we're going to be doing a quick overview on end conditions for extrudes. Whether you're just getting started with SOLIDWORKS or you've been using it for a few years, this is going to be a great review. So here I have a sample part with a single solid body in it. I've created a sketch that I'll be looking to extrude into the body. So first, let's select our sketch and begin our extrude. So first you'll notice the default direction of our extrude goes off the triad we have. In this case, it's going in the positive Z direction. So let's flip the direction so that it goes into the body. So next, let's look at our end conditions. So by default, we have this going at a blind distance. This is a quick way to find any kind of set value, set distance. But in this case, if this sketch were to ever go farther away or closer to my model, for example, right, we'll have to take that into account. So it may not give us the result that we want. Instead, right, what about through all? If I take a look at through all, the only thing is if I look on the back and how this was designed, I have the back faces coming to a vertex. With your through all end condition, this extrudes through all the existing geometry. And as you can see here, it's going to give me more material than I want. What about the next one? We'll take a look at up to next. That works. So with the up to next, it's going to hit the next surface that encompasses the entire profile being extruded, right? Which in this case are these two squares that I have. If I go up to vertex, I can identify a single vertex to extrude up to, like for example, this edge here. This will work, just not give me the end result that I want, right? It'll kind of provide me a a um, little gap, but it'll go up to the vertex. So you'll identify which vertex we want to go up to. Next, we have an up to surface, which where I can identify which surface I want to extrude to. So if I selected this surface, this one's interesting because you'll notice that one of the profiles doesn't go up to the arc, but what it does is it assumes that it, the surface is being extended out in that same curved direction, creating that body. We have our offset from surface. In this situation, say I wanted to translate the surface, and then therefore say I wanted to maintain a distance between this surface. So in this case, five millimeters, for example, right? This would use that same surface reference Right, or you can choose another one, and then also use a specific distance. We also have an up to body. In this one, it's similar to the up to next. The only difference is here, I can select the body. So for instance, if there was a body in between, you know, my sketch and the the body here that I'm extruding to, the up to next would go up just up to that body as long as it encompassed the entire profile. Here, right, with the up to body, I can select to say which body I'm trying to extrude this all the way up to. Lastly, we have our mid plane. With our mid plane, this is going to extend the feature from the sketch plane equally in both directions. So, for example, if I were to go 30, that means that. The total is 30, so it's going 15 in one direction and then 15 in the other. So in this scenario, both the up to next and then up to body are going to work well here. And once you know the end condition that you want, another shortcut that you can use is just a simple right click. So you can right click and then you can go ahead and select your end conditions is the same as if you selected on the left hand side menu. We'll press the green check and then create our extrude. So in today's video, we covered some of the different results we can get when we tweak the end conditions for an extrude. Whether it's making sure your extrude goes through all, extrudes up to or offsets from a body, 
or is done with the midplane, you're now armed with a few more tools in your belt to create the part that you're looking for. Thanks for watching.